My name is Andrea Donnellan. I'm at the Jet Propulsion Lab and I'm adjunct at USC. I got started in geodesy. That's a hard answer, actually. <laughs> oh, so I'm not sure how to answer. I, I originally got started in geodesy as an undergraduate studying the West Antarctic ice streams and we had large Doppler receivers for measuring motion of the ice streams. Later when I went to graduate school I got interested in understanding plate tectonics because by then with GPS we could start measuring plate tectonic rates. I do not call myself a geodesist, I call myself a geophysicist because I don't calculate the Earth's shape or the Earth's motion. I use those results to infer things about what's going on inside the Earth. I originally started using geodetic te techniques for my research as an undergraduate when we were measuring motion of the ice streams in Antarctica and then later as a graduate student to measure deformation in the Ventura Basin in Southern California. I want to understand how faults work and I use geodetic tools to do that. So from surface motions we infer what's going on at depth, how faults are moving, where strain is accumulating and where earthquakes may be in the future. Or we also study how the earth responds as a result of earthquakes. My area of interest is in Southern California primarily and also a little bit of Northern California. I've been working in the Salton Trough and the Los Angeles Basin. One of the major research advances is just being able to measure crustal deformation and from that infer faults. And so it's a, a research advancement but also a practical advancement because they're starting to use these crustal deformation, deformation measurements to make hazard maps in California. So that's one major result. Another is being able to get at the data through the cyber infrastructure from both INSAR and GPS so that non-experts in the field can use, use the data to carry out science analysis. Um, and then the last, I think the ice sheets are very important, understanding deformation of the ice sheets and how that ties into deformation of the continent is very important in Antarctica and Greenland. You can use GPS to measure flow of ice sheets. You can also use GPS to measure the tectonics on the mountains surrounding the ice sheets and understand what's tectonic spreading, and what else may be going on in addition to ice sheet collapse. We can also measure post-glacial rebound. When the ice sheet was thicker um, 10,000 years ago or 14,000 years ago, it pushed the Earth's crust down and the mantle down. And as that's thinned, the, the ground has actually popped up and we measure that with GPS. One of the main technical advances is automated processing. Well, the first technical advance that we've benefited from the UNAVCO facility is just having access to GPS receivers and being able to make measurements. The second is automating processes and serving the data so that we can make use of those data. And then the third is probably integrating different types of data such as INSAR and GPS. When I was a grad undergraduate student, we were lugging huge, uh, huge transit Doppler satellite receivers out into the field in Antarctica. And then as a graduate student, we first had these very large TI-4100 boxes that were um, 70 and 90 pounds a piece for the antenna and the receiver. Um, we had to stay up all night and do weather every half an hour with these receivers. Um, now I sit in my office and the data come to me from all over the world. I first used the TI-4100 from UNAVCO in 1986 in the transverse ranges experiment that was a big cooperative experiment and then my work in the Ventura Basin spun off of that. And that's the San Gabriels? Ventura Basin, well it's no, it's transverse ranges but west to the San Gabriels. Well, I think um, probably one of the most interesting stories, there are a few, we did a lot of GPS on the Channel Islands and I was doing one stint on Santa Cruz Island with my advisor who was staying up doing the weather in the truck and I was sleeping and while he was maybe dozing or staying up, I'm not sure which, one of the wild pigs on the island ran off with my shoe. 
squealing. Um, another time when we were babysitting the TI-4100, which again, we don't do that anymore, I woke up in a herd of buffalo on Catalina Island. They move very quickly, but oh, it's yeah. a little disturbing because yes. they can be very aggressive. I think we're going to get a much more clear picture from geodesy of how faults move, and that's because we can integrate different techniques, different geodetic techniques, gravity, radar, and GPS. And we can get the mass changes and the motions on all kinds of different scales, fine scales from the radar, broad scales from the gravity, and intermediate scales from the GPS. We'll also get different temporal scales so we can really see transient deformation occurring in different processes and start to untangle what's aquifer, water withdrawal versus tectonic motion.